Hello, I'm Grimgrind, and welcome to this video. Well, it's been about five months since the last build request, so let's just get straight into it. One of the vehicles that I get requested quite a lot, and basically have so since pretty much the beginning of me doing build requests, is a V22 Osprey. And since last Monday, I did a builder's guide to nuts and bolts on VTOLs, and since the Osprey is in fact a VTOL, I figured what better time to actually build an Osprey than right now. And speaking of right now, as is the case whenever I do a military vehicle, I want to stress that I'm not a modern military expert, I'm basing all of my knowledge on this vehicle's design by reference pictures in Google Images, so if it doesn't have all of the functionality, or if it doesn't look quite right because I've missed subtle details, I do apologise, but hopefully I get it close enough that when you make your own version, you're able to polish that up quickly. Although, on the offset, I want to quickly point out that I am aware that the actual Osprey has fixed wings and that it's only the turbines that shift position, but unfortunately that method doesn't apply too well to Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. It'll do the vertical takeoff fine, but once you move the engines forward, while it will be able to glide, it quickly loses its altitude. And so I've elected to have the entire wings turned so we get a bit of the functionality and a bit of the look. It's not perfect, but it'll have to do until either I or you discover a better way. And so, the V-22 Osprey, basically the main inspiration for every cool sci-fi helicopter in science fiction history. I think the main challenge of building an Osprey is having the wings actually be able to move their position, although since I did just finish experimenting with VTOLs and their functionality is still pretty fresh in my mind, I actually found this to be a relatively quick and easy build. It is, however, with that said, a very different design to that of the actual VTOL I built myself, which was on my own design, as that one changes jet orientation by moving down a shell, which was actually probably bigger than the main part of the vehicle itself, whereas the Osprey's wings are mounted on top, don't really cover up much of the vehicle at all aside from the hinge where they connect, and aren't exactly centred in the vehicle. L long ways, I mean, across they are dead centre. There was initially a lot of problems I ran into, especially with balance, with the VTOL taking off in weird angles and whatnot, but as I got the design of it more aesthetically accurate, the balance quickly followed. It's one of the things that just comes pleasantly together when you're actually building a vehicle that exists in reality. As you can see with the back wings, I went through various design phases of them, until I eventually removed the wings altogether and made it entirely aesthetic. This is because if you want your vehicle to be able to take straight off, and if you want the entire movement of your vehicle to change depending on the position of the wings at the front, you don't want real wings at the back that are static that are affecting the way it takes off and the way that it flies. So it also helped the vehicle a lot once I had done away with those. Much like the VTOL I made last Monday, all of the power is in the actual wings that turn, and the small propeller connected to the hull of the vehicle is only there to stabilise it and is absolutely without power. Speaking of the power in the wings, on either side there's a large propeller powered by a large engine and two small jets. The large propellers are there because it looks aesthetically similar to the propellers on the actual Osprey, and the small jets are really just there to mimic the shape of the bottom of the Osprey's propellers and to give a little bit more power. I then played around with the hinge a little bit more to make it work more the way that I wanted. There is of course a gyroscope attached to it so I can alter the wing's position while flying, and then made the front of the Osprey a little bit more weighty with some heavy blocks to offset the weight of the vehicle's back end, painted the whole thing black, and there you have it. It's surprisingly manoeuvrable, you can even do a barrel roll in it without having the wings locked, which is good because I didn't actually put a wing lock mechanism in this vehicle, and by using the gyroscope you can alter the wing's position while flying, causing you to climb rapidly or switch into flight mode whenever you need it without any difficulties whatsoever. It's actually a pretty fun vehicle to fly. And if you want to fly it yourself, as always, what's going to follow now is the layer by layer of it so you can copy into your own save. And so with all of that said and done, until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle, and you've been watching the build request for the V-22 Osprey. And as this layer by layer is playing, I'm just going to take this time to plug one of our other series. If you don't want to hear what is essentially an ad, feel free to mute the video. Usually all you hear at this point of the video anyway is the game sounds, so you're not going to miss out on too much, so don't worry about that. But if you're still here now, and you're into scary stories, spooky stories, or creepy pastors, then you should check out our radio horror style show, Beyond the Rusted Gate. They are original stories written by Grin, so if you're wondering what he's up to between making infrequent videos, that's some of it, and read by the very audibly pleasing Sir Darkwell Bled. There are currently only two episodes, The Ghost House which was released this Halloween, and The Haunted Figure of Athens that was released the previous Halloween, although going into next year we hope to put out quite a few more. So if you are looking for something spooky to listen to, I invite you to come and check out Beyond the Rusted Gate. It's completely free, available on YouTube, and when the end cards come up in a second, there'll be a direct link to the playlist, which is also provided in the description below. Here's a short preview for the first story, The Haunted Figure of Athens. As her eyes studied the block, they passed over an object that her eyes, or possibly her mind, could not fully comprehend. 
and for reasons she could not quite place, Mary was struck with a tidal wave of primordial fear. With effort, Mary mustered a calm demeanour, pointed to the jet-black, non-distinct lump that had so disturbed her, and in a deliberate but forced nonchalant manner, inquired as to David, what do you reckon that is? Obviously not too disturbed himself, David waved off the object to be probably just a pile of trash, helpfully adding, or something. But so far as Mary was concerned, just a pile of trash did not quite explain the knots of fear that had tied themselves within her stomach, nor why, when they would pass the vacant block of land only half an hour later, the jet-black object that had troubled her so much was nowhere to be seen.